When a child grows up in fear, the brain doesn't just remember it, it rewires itself in order to survive it. When we talk about childhood trauma, most people think of terrible events, abuse, neglect, violence. And yes, those experiences can leave deep marks. But what neuroscience is showing us now is that trauma isn't just about what happened. It's about how a child's developing brain adapted to survive it. The brain doesn't simply record events, it learns from them. It shapes itself in response to the environment. And when that environment is unpredictable or unsafe, the brain builds itself around protection, not connection. In the early years, the brain depends on relationships. Every smile, every soothing voice, every moment of being comforted. These are not small things. They are biological signals that tell the brain you're safe enough to grow. When a child has consistent care, their brain develops in a way that supports learning, emotional regulation and social connection. But when those relationships are marked by fear, neglect or inconsistency, the brain adapts to survive instead of thrive. A child growing up in chaos learns to stay alert. The stress system in the brain, especially the part involved in detecting threats, stays switched on. The child becomes skilled at noticing danger, reading faces, scanning tones. In a dangerous home, that ability keeps them safe. But later on, in an ordinary classroom, workplace or relationship, that same vigilance can become exhausting. That is what researchers term latent vulnerability, a kind of hidden risk that develops when the brain has been trained to expect threat, even when threat is no longer there. Neuroscience highlights three main brain systems affected by early trauma. The threat system, the reward system and the memory system. First, the threat system area like the amygdala becomes overactive. It's like having a smoke alarm that goes off at the smallest sign of heat. That's hypervigilance, constantly scanning, constantly ready to react. Second, the reward system, which helps us feel motivation and pleasure can become less responsive. When love and safety are inconsistent, the brain learns not to expect them. So as adults, it can feel difficult to take joy in ordinary things. The brain has learned to mute those signals. And third, the memory system, particularly autobiographical memory, which changes too. Trauma tends to make negative memories stand out more vividly while positive ones fade. Everyday memories become less detailed, which can make new experiences harder to trust or enjoy. When these adaptations carry into adulthood, they can shape how we see the world. An innocent comment might feel like criticism. A new friendship might feel unsafe. Even peace can feel unfamiliar because the brain has learned to feel at home in tension. And that's important to understand. These patterns are learned responses, not flaws. They once kept the person alive, but now they can make ordinary life feel like walking through a field of hidden alarms. The good news is that the brain is adaptable. What was once learned for survival can be unlearned through safety and consistency. Therapeutic relationships, mindfulness, compassion. These experiences begin to teach the brain something new. Over time, the threat system calms down. The reward system reawakens. 
the memory system begins to integrate both the painful and the good. But this takes time and it takes people who see behaviour through the right lens. A child acting out isn't being difficult. They're showing us how their brain has learned to cope. Understanding that is the foundation of trauma-informed care. So when we talk about childhood trauma, we're really talking about adaptation, about a brain that did exactly what it needed to do to survive. Those adaptations might create challenges later in life, but they also speak to resilience, to the strength of a system that refused to give up. Healing begins when we understand this, when we see behaviour not as brokenness, but as intelligence under pressure. And from that understanding, we can begin to help the brain and the person learn that safety, trust and connection are possible again.